Hiya, how are you? I'm, I'm being lazy today, I'm not gonna lie. This is gonna be a shorter video, a little bit different from the heavier stuff, but yeah, I've got, I've got slippers on and I'm ready to, uh, we're just chilling. So I have a weird and crazy story. This one's a little bit off the rails, okay? But also heartwarming, like it's, it's really weird and you'll see what I mean. This is a story about an experiment by a very ambitious inventor who worked with the help of his grandfather to recreate a walking, talking model of consciousness of a dead person using the media collected and formed throughout the person's life. Who was that person? His grandfather. Uh, the загрузить в робота и э, будет ли робот осмысленно отвечать на вопросы. Вот. This is the story of Alexander Osipovich. Sorry. I have no excuse. Who kind of looks okay, he looks like Lip from Shameless a little bit, right? Kind of, at least like a little, right? Jeremy Allen White. <laughs> Do you see it? I had never heard of this story, and when I found it I was like, this is the most fascinating thing. I just want to talk about it like immediately. So cool. He do need to be a little bit forgiving with me. Because all of his videos are in Russian, as well as the majority of any articles covering this are also in Russian. I, I did my best, so bear with me. Um, there is a language barrier here that I did have to work around, but I think everything should be pretty much right. So let's get into it. What if death were no longer permanent? What if it was more like a transition from one state to another? I mean, what is death without a loss of life? Death can Death is a loss of life if life is preserved or protected. Alexander was born in the city of Krunger, I did it again, in Russia, and being a young boy in 1984, he absolutely loved the Terminator movies. Loved them. Hands down, big fan of the Terminator movies. But you didn't like that the robot looks like Terminator. The main idea was not Terminator, but and who doesn't like the Terminator movies? But especially like a young boy, he was their biggest fan, right? And he was fascinated by the Terminator. He wasn't like afraid of it, he was fascinated by it. He was watching a video interview with the creators of the movie, this was James Cameron's Terminator, and basically he found out something that would not only inspire him profoundly, but absolutely change the course of his life forever. The problem with the Terminator is that it's confined to the fictional. It is limited to the bounds of James Cameron's imagination, and Alexander wanted to change that. He learned that you can build the real whole Terminator in real life for yourself, your own little Terminator. All you need is the blueprints of the endoskeleton. Now, Alexander lived with his grandfather, and they were super close. His grandfather's name was Nikolai, and he worked as a designer at a factory in town making engines, like designing engines for like military equipment and stuff like that. Um, and Alexander looked up to his grandfather so much. He was like his role model. He wanted to be his grandfather when he grew up. In return, his grandfather supported Andrew just as much. He is said to have been an absolutely, just like a very, very kind man very caring, loved his grandson to the ends of the earth. He really saw the potential in Andrew to be whatever he wanted to be. And his grandfather was ready to be with him every single step of the way, cheering him on. His grandfather wasn't just kind though, he was also pretty brilliant. He was awarded the Lenin Prize from the USSR for the scientific and technical developments in the field of guidance systems. He had the spirit of an inventor and the know-how of a designer. Andrew recalled one thing that his grandfather told him that he said he would never forget. I'll quote it here. He said, you can't foresee the future, but you can invent it. Not only did Andrew never forget this, he lived by this and he invented something extremely special with some admittedly really terrifying implications, but he invented something absolutely unbelievable, never been done before. He started when he was young with his grandfather's help. So learning about the industry his grandfather worked in, he 
gained an interest in all of the same things that his grandfather had, you know, encouraged and shown him. And then he started college studying programming. And while doing so, he started writing a program. In 2009, he began writing the program for the first Terminator. He was building its brain. So it took from 2009 until 2011 for the brain to be far enough along that he felt he was at a point where he could start working on the actual being itself, the body, right? The place that would house this brain and give it all of its capabilities. At that point, he'd already made multiple versions of the brain in Visual Basics and it was finally time to start really working on how he was gonna get this massive, life-size Terminator into existence. How he's gonna bring this to life, if you will. He knew he had to build an endoskeleton, but... How the... do you build an endoskeleton? Now this is obviously not an easy task, and around this time is when 3D printing was starting to become like a thing, you know? Before this, it was just kind of like combined to very, very like limited applications. But this is when 3D printing kind of became a thing. You could like buy a 3D printer. This was like, whoa, holy cow, you can like print things. That's wild, right? This was 2011. <laughs> so this was like the coolest thing ever. And he thought, you know, this is really the perfect way to get my Terminator at, to have like a body, right? Because I can just customize and print each and every piece, put them all together, and voila, Terminator. So around 2013 is when he finally got his plans finalized for the build. So he had the design finalized and everything, and around this point in 2013, Google was super into DIY projects, so they were like really encouraging people and promoting the idea of, you know, do-it-yourself projects and ideas, and Andrew saw this and he got an idea. So he decided he would write Google and tell them about his program that he'd written and then ask them for instruction on building the actual robot itself. I don't know, I didn't know that you could do, like, he just wrote to Google. He just straight up wrote Google and they answered him and they did, you know, they helped him out, which they came through. They sent him back a schematic for putting together his robot and the robot is called a T-800, which kind of sounds like a calculator, but it is, it's a Terminator. And that's the thing, I'm ref I'm calling this thing the Terminator, but it was his grandfather. Well, it was like a robot of his grandfather, but if I call it like his grandfather, then that'll get really confusing because we're also talking about his actual grandfather, so I kind of got to call the robot the Terminator, but just know that the Terminator is his grandfather in robot form. <laughs> Does that make sense at all? Did I make it worse? This schematic was detailed. It was well thought out, including even the exact positions of the actuators and where they would need to be to be able to like move the limbs of the robot and make it walk or move its arms. And this was perfect because now he could just, all he had to do was get a 3D printer and then get started making each and every part of the T-800. So then he went on to design and print each and every piece of the Terminator. If you don't know anything about 3D printing, or you don't have much experience in 3D printing, it's not fast. Even by today's standards, it's it takes a while, right? So back in 2013, it took a long time, a very long time to print like even small things. It didn't matter. It takes a long time. Still does, but less. So it actually ended up taking four years for him to get each and every piece of this robot printed off fully. Four years in, he finally got everything printed out. I can't even imagine being able to like stay on a project that long. I just, wow, impressive. So it took four years, but eventually he peeled off the last piece off that print bed, assembled it onto the robot, and he was finally done with this body, right? He's finally done. The problem though was that he couldn't find actuators that were strong enough to power the Terminator's limbs, so it was wheelchair bound, unfortunately. But not any less intimidating, arguably more intimidating. On the inside, he was way, way, way more than just intimidating. This is when things turned dark really quick. This was 2017. This was the year that he finally managed to assemble each and every part of this massive, intricate project and it turned devastating because there was a fire and the Terminator unfortunately was destroyed in the fire. 
10 years of hard work and just the details and the everything and it was just and not to mention his grandfather at this point was 90 years old and he was just left with nothing he was left with nothing and he never saw this coming i mean that's just not really something you expect right you spend your whole life basically building this robot you don't expect it to to, to get destroyed in a fire that's horrible that's now the last 10 years gone and he had nothing each painstaking hour of designing, coding, fixing, melted into nothing. Like it never existed in the first place. Now Alexander could have given up here. I can't say I wouldn't have given up here. Honestly, can't say I would have made it there. But no, he didn't. He actually shared his story. He went online and kind of reached out to people and good people decided to help him out. They wanted to help actualize this vision, right? They saw that he was, one, that he was like capable of doing it and two, they cared about him. They cared about his grandfather. This was like so sad. <laughs> this was so sad. So people came together and they decided to donate the money to help him rebuild the Terminator for the second time. So he worked for another straight year. And by this point, you know, technology had advanced a lot. 3D printers had gotten faster, plus he already had everything kind of designed and he'd already put it together once. So he kind of had like a idea of how to do it, you know, go faster the second time. But it still took a year. That's how intricate, detailed, and big this thing was. So after that year, he had finally rebuilt the T-800. And this one was the real. Deal. This robot was not meant to ever be a machine. Machines are cold and they're task oriented and they're artificial and this, you know, this was meant to be way more than that. Not only was it modeled after his grandfather, but the idea, like the robots, the way they were gonna make the personality, that idea and how to build it actually came from Andrew's grandfather himself. Andrew's grandfather, he's the one that suggested, why don't we take the videos we have of, you know, me and, and you talking and digitize and then upload them into this brain, right? This Terminator brain. So they did. Andrew went through and he digitized each and every video, came up with over seven hours of footage in total with his grandfather that he could then upload into the mind of the robot. This would become the robot's first memories. The brain is composed of a complex neural network with the ability to learn, to understand, and to remember. So he says, the neural network in the robot recognizes phrases spoken by the person, assigns a text marker to each word, and then puts the phrases back together depending on the result given by the knowledge base for the answer. If there are enough words to answer my question, the program creates a new sentence from those words, even if they were not previously spoken by my grandfather. He then goes on to explain that if the knowledge base doesn't have enough words to answer, the robot will then answer with, I don't know anything. I have less information than you do. That's the most relatable thing I think I've ever heard in my life. That's my mantra. So he wasn't actually building the Terminator. Like I said, he was building a simulation of his grandfather's consciousness with the help of his aging grandfather. So in 2019, unfortunately, his grandfather Nikolai did pass away at the age of 92. And this was devastating for Andrew. He kind of knew it was coming, but it really wasn't any easier when it happened. 
The Terminator-inspired grandfather simulation, though, was really all that was left. He hoped that it would be helpful with the grieving process. This was kind of the plan, that even when something inevitably happened to his grandfather, because he was getting much older, he would still have this robot that they built together to be what his grandfather no longer could be on this planet. А я электромагнитную пушку сделал. Ну зачем вот эти запасы, хулиган? Я только для, я только для опытов. <laughs> Ты всегда давал мне мудрые советы. Я знаю, глобально говорю. А ты помнишь, что ты мне читал, когда я был маленький перед сном? So the robot was phenomenal. It spoke in his grandfather's voice. It recognized objects. It recognized faces. It could tell how old somebody was. It could tell what gender they likely were. He also added little nodes so the robot was able to move very well now. It was no longer like bound to a wheelchair or anything. It had full capabilities to move its arms. Not only just move, but move with like extreme precision and accuracy. I mean, this thing is absolutely mind blowing. He can play chess. He can answer emails which I need. He can talk on the phone. He can sew with a sewing machine. He can even, he can even shoot a gun, which for the record, I don't know why or how you would ever trust a Terminator inspired robot with a gun, but ballsy. Some serious trust in the Terminator, I gotta say. And I mean, look at these pictures. Is this, how cute is this? This is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. This is so adorable. He's playing chess with the cat. He's playing chess with the cat. Look at him so. Look at him go. It, that, this is just the cutest thing ever. I know it's like, I don't know why this is so cute to me. I, I love, this is just adorable. Look at. So cute. Am I weird? I feel like I'm really weird. But I look at him play with the cat. I love. Okay, that said, <laughs> the robot is still a, to this day a work in progress and the only one of its kind, but Alexander is an inventor. He knew the value of the metal being that now encompassed a simulation of his grandfather and his grandfather's consciousness. It was now a digital duplicate that spoke and joked all the same and that maybe it could help others, you know, with the grieving process. He said, this technology can be useful for people who cannot come to terms with the loss of a loved one after their death, but have a large amount of recorded media data to analyze. You can also create interactive monuments using face cloning technology. So that's pretty wild. I mean, the idea of being able to, to do this and the fact that, I mean, now, like his grandfather, remember he was 92 in, in what was it, 2019? So he was much older, but for us and for people that are grown up on the internet, I don't know how old you guys are, but you're watching this video, so I assume you know you're online. Um, the amount of data that we have of like ourselves online is, is substantial. And so the ability to use the data that's like uploaded online, just like different media, whatever digital media you leave behind and collect over your life and being able to assemble that into something that will keep you around kind of in a way when you're no longer around is, is it's wild. And it's a rabbit hole that I'm, I, I'm not letting my brain go down today. That said, I just think this is, I think this is a really heartwarming story. I think it's really, really sweet. And I think if you're, if you're sad, you know, just look at this robot. Just look at him. Громадные здания, поезда, и даже я. Все это дело рук человека. 
Самое главное – поверить в себя, и все, двери перед вами будут открыты. Поверьте мне. Ведь это сказал я. Джон Генри. Терминатор. Plus the fact that his grandfather helped him build this, this just makes my heart warm. So, that's really it. This was a shorter video. This was a lot more lighthearted than what I've been talking about recently. So thank you for watching. As far as the replica videos go, if anything substantial or, or happens that like would warrant a video, I will make it and I will cover it. I am going to keep up with that situation and follow that situation. So if you're interested in following all of that replica stuff, definitely subscribe. If you like this kind of content, subscribe also okay yeah um thank you for watching i really really appreciate it you are the best and please be safe out there